My name is Christy Carson, and I'm a reader in Shakespeare and performance in the English department at Laurel Holloway. I'm going to talk today about King Lear. So my five things are uh, quite different, and I want to present them in a way that hopefully gives you some, um, some things to work with that um, allow you to show contrast. I think one of the key things about the plays and why they've uh, lasted so long is the, that they're so flexible in performance. You can put them in all sorts of different places and times. So the first thing is that I would suggest that the play is actually quite a funny play. King Lear is an old man who wanders around losing his mind. Um, he bumps into a variety of, of other funny people. Um, Edgar, you know, as he is dressed as poor Tom, is, is a bedlam beggar. And people would have gone to see the bedlam beggars as a form of entertainment. Um, Gloucester, when he's blind, it's not a pretty sight. We're a little bit more sympathetic, but the idea of a madman leading a blind man, I mean, that's become almost a cliche. And then there's the fool, the fool leading a king. Again, you know, that idea of where does influence come from? How do our leaders decide what they're going to do and who they listen to? Um, that, you know, the storm scene is, is an extraordinary uh, expose of how fallible our leaders are. So I think that if you want to look at that aspect of the play, that um, the Globe in particular uh, have done a number of productions that really engage the audience and make it clear that, you know, some of the things that are happening, uh, you know, a man trying to commit suicide uh, by just falling forward on the stage, uh, they're not supposed to be realistic. They're supposed to be theatrical. And there is that element constantly of, do you take it seriously? Do you find it funny? And again, in a strange way, I actually find that... Um, Horrible histories are a really good way of introducing the students to the fact that there is that kind of satirical thing happening in the plays, that they are uh, larger than life. They are trying to get at truths, but in a way that is humorous and, and appeals to, to people in all sorts of different ways. Which brings me to my second point, which is that I do think the play is very political. Um, it was being written at a time when there was um, a, a new king on the throne. James the first of, of England, but sixth of Scotland, and so there was this idea of trying to bring the kingdoms of, of Britain together. Um, and the play is a kind of a warning, saying, you know, what happens when you split apart a kingdom. So it is um, very much caught up in the ideas of its own time. Again, I think when you look at productions, uh, if the production is set in a, a specific place and time, um, you know, a particular regime, then it can have those political resonances. One of the really quite um, startling productions that uh, came to London recently was the Belarus um, Theatre Company, who were all exiled, not able to speak in their own country, um, doing a version of that play as part of the Globe's Globe um, season, but they repeated it again uh, last year. And it's a very hard-hitting, um, uh, 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 well, indictment, really, of, of leadership in, the, in, um, in their country. Now, again, it's not uh, a pleasant watch all the time, but it certainly gets across the, the fact that the people in power don't necessarily take, uh, well, they sometimes even take pleasure in, in causing pain to the people around them and showing how much uh, power that they actually have. Um, my third point is that I think it's also, um, it's a family play. And again, that's something that everyone can relate to. And I think that know, the students particularly, if we, you engage them in conversations about their fathers, their sisters, their brothers, there is, you know, there's a lot to tap into there. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should um, say that, you know, Shakespeare wrote the plays for them and uh, that these are real characters and we should put them on the couch and psychoanalyze them. Um, no, I think they're really very uh, interesting um, um, analogies that you can use and the idea that family inheritance is a, is a really um, difficult struggle for everyone that, you know, that when uh, uh, power and uh, often money passes from one generation to the next, there's a real scramble. Um, and you do get brothers pitted against other brothers and sisters and, uh, you know, wanting to kill each other. So there's an awful lot there to work with. And I think that the, the nature of the actor, the older actor, who then gets badly treated by his own family um, is also a source of potential engagement um, and uh, you know the 
one that comes to my mind is, is Ian McKellen as King Lear, because of course I would assume that the students would know him from other parts, you know, like predominantly Gandalf, and then this powerful, you know, wizard character being brought down by his own family is, is, is a little bit heartbreaking. And again, engaging them in that way, I think, is, it can be quite powerful. Um, the fourth thing I wanted to point out is, the, is that it's a very visual play. I've already mentioned the idea of the, of the mock suicide and the, the, the men walking around in, um, sometimes uh, in the nude. Um, I've seen it done in um, the, uh, the storm scene. But I think the other thing that's important about the, the visual nature of the play is how it, um, it is selective, that, that Shakespeare doesn't always um, tell you, he doesn't show you everything. We hear about the, the death of the three daughters and we see Cordelia dead, but we do see the battle between the two sons um, and Edgar um, vanquishing, you know, bringing out his own um, deadliness, vanquishing his brother and his brother asking for forgiveness. Again, that kind of last minute um, uh, confession. But I think the most uh, grueling and but also the most affecting moment in the play is, of course, the, the gouging out of the eyes of Gloucester. Um, again, it's a, a, a something you can't walk away from. Um, you know, people have fainted. People have have uh, you know people cover their eyes, and sometimes it's the sound as much as anything. So I really think that that idea of watching um, a moment that is both horrifying and potentially funny at the same time. Uh, the students, I think, have a, a, a really good sense of that combination. Um, you don't have to look very far in popular culture to find things that are horrible and um, gruesome and bloody and funny uh, all at the same time. And uh, Lear is packed with all of that. The final thing is that it is a very textually complex play um, because of the, the existence of a quarto and a folio, but then also the, the, the conflated text bringing the two together was around for such a long time that if you're looking at performance history in particular, um, that mixed uh, what I called the finder text on the King, Cambridge King Lear CD-ROM that I, I helped to develop um, is, is an important text as well. And then of course, for 150 years on the stage, there was a, a King Lear which had a happy ending, the Nahum Tate. So there's this interesting um, uh, way in which an audience determines whether or not you can see that horror on the stage at a particular moment. And uh, when, you know, there was a mad king and the madness of King George on the throne, the play was banned because nobody wanted to discuss mad kings. Suddenly, as soon as he dies, lots of productions of this particular play. So again, it's a play that, that sort of comes and goes in terms of, of favor. Um, and I think that but there are particular moments when it speaks very much to um, the way we're feeling because inevitably as an, a leader ages they get out of touch and at what point do you withdraw that support for that leader and make them step down um, you can look at you know contemporary politics uh, uh, and you don't have to again look very far for examples to pull out and again I think it's worth doing that with the students to make them realize that these are our uh, that's the political part of it but these are things that, that recur so all of the things that are available now, the, uh, through Drama Online, you can get the texts, the Bolger, uh, the Norton, uh, but also the, the performance resources. There's my own uh, Designing Shakespeare, which shows pictures of the plays in performance over, over from 1960 to 2000. But then there are video um, and DVDs, of course, increasingly available. Um, but I would suggest that ra as, as well as film um, uh, adaptations, I would call them, that you uh, include some some aspects of the stage, and so uh, the Globe uh, uh, is ha, gives you access to their productions on DVD now, but also the RSC and the National, um, their fine fine productions, which are definitely worth uh, including. And then there's Digital Theatre, which you can get a subscription to, um, which has a production by with Jonathan Price and Kay Thorpe. So they're compared with just even a few years ago, there are so many resources out there to help you in the classroom to make the play come alive for the students um, in the room. And I think that's the most important thing.